Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Be Open and Authentic with Rohit. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about American football, uh, but diving deep into all aspects of increasing human performance. Right? So, I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Um, and particularly we will be focusing more on the physical and mental fitness aspects of it. Um, so, this, this is my first episode on, you know, beat uh, American football or, you know, the fitness. So, I'm, I'm really excited to... Uh, talk more about it uh, with Ran White on the show with us. Uh, Ran is the you know, ex-American football captain uh, of, at the college level and also a fitness professional and an expert. So let's, let's get started. Um, Ran, thank you for uh, willing to, uh, you know, for, for willingness to share all your expertise on the podcast with me. Uh, so I want to learn more about your journey and, and uh, what you do on a day-to-day basis and how you train people on um, everyday basis, uh, you know, on the concept of increasing human performance. So yes, thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, thank you. No, nah, first and foremost, I appreciate you for having me on. Um, it definitely is a blessing. It's an opportunity that I definitely yep. value being able to speak and have a voice because not a lot of people are given that platform. So uh, like I said, anything to help people understand, like just how to grow. That's what I'm all about is just growing as a human being. Um, I did have a journey into fitness going into football, but like I said, I'll dive into that. I'll, I'll just want to formally really thank you for having me on, Roe, if I don't take it lightly. Um, but yeah, I'll let you move forward with all the questions, my man. I appreciate you again. Cool, yeah. And, and this is all, you know, this is what this podcast is about, you know, giving voice to the right people and, and creating, you know, valuable content that can help people so that we all can grow together. So end of the day, that is what life is about, right? Yes, sir. So yeah, thanks again. Uh, and, and uh, you know, just curious uh, to know a little bit about, you know, your journey so far. Uh, you yes, know, you've been um, a captain uh, in, in, the, in the American football, which is a very intense game. So I want to learn more about it. Uh, can, can you start with an introduction? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, so my name is Ryan White. Um, I'm from the home of the greatest. Um, I always ask that question. Do you know who the greatest is, Rohi? <laughs> greatest, uh, you know, for me in, in, in the football? Nah, not just who, when you think of the greatest, who do you think of? In your mm, mind. I, I'm from India. <laughs> so, okay, it can be, it can uh, be I'm, India. I'm from India. He's a, he's a global icon. He's a global icon. You got two seconds. Uh, Muhammad sure. Ali. Muhammad Ali. Oh, okay. Mm. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Yeah, so you being yeah, from yeah, India, yeah. that doesn't... Yeah, you, you know who that man is, so... I, I know that. Yeah, that. Yes, sir. So from Louisville, Kentucky, like I said, home of the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Um, I always do that and ask that question because of really what he symbolizes and what he embodied. And uh, his service to just the world... Um, he was just a champion. Yep. He really understood his purpose and what he wanted in life. And and I think a lot of people where I come from have that type of fight inside of them. Um, so I always bring it up. But that's where I'm from. Uh, I've been playing. I played, a, well, I played American football starting out when I was like six years old. I saw my uncle playing. And he had these like nice. football pads on. And I think that back then that just excited me. I was like, oh, I want to wear that too. And then over time, yeah. uh, really my first time playing when I was six years old, a guy told me that he was going to light me up, which he really meant that he was going to, like, hit me really hard. But I took that to heart, and, like, I told my mom I didn't want to play. So that's, like, a big secret I never told anybody, which you got that on your podcast. <laughs> um, but I ended up playing, uh, like I said, that was my first interaction with football, so I understood that you, like, had to have a different type of mind in order to play that game. But any, anyway, I yeah. kept going with that love and that what really caught my eye and stuck with it. And I ended up playing all the way until, uh, like, you know, I played rec league, eighth grade, obviously. It was one of the better teams. We won, won championships, and, like, a big group of us went to a high school in Louisville, Kentucky, Trinity High School, which is a, um, a, pro- a prominent private school up there. And that really brought me into, like, a positive light. It showed me, exposed me to... Um, just a different world of business. Uh, some kids were driving nice cars early. So, like I said, just spoke me to a different lifestyle. Um, yeah. And I was from the west end of Louisville, Kentucky, which don't didn't have much. You know what I mean? Me and my friends, we would go out, play basketball, handle business. 
and keep it moving. But like nobody was driving up in BMWs and things like that. So it just exposed me to more. Yeah. And I was like, OK, I see what this life is like. Um, and football granted me that opportunity. That's why I always talk about that. Football blessed me with that opportunity to see those things um, and be in spaces yeah. with chief marketing officers of hospitals and things of that nature. Um, so being blessed enough to go to a school like that, we were fortunate enough to win multiple championships. And um, really when it came to football, um, I knew early on that my mom wasn't going to be able to pay for me to go to college. And because of that very reason, I just went all in with football sports. So a lot of people who look like me, black Americans, we do have to utilize sports or music to find our outlet. And that's not to say that we have to. Um, uh, that's why I do the work that I'm doing to teach people this, that like, that's not the only way, but anyway, some people yeah. do choose those outlets and I chose that route and I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship offer to Vanderbilt university, had multiple offers. Yes. Um, but I chose to go to Vanderbilt due to being in the SEC, um, when it comes to American football, but also the academic, uh, the prestigious academic that they had, and I just knew yep. they was preaching a 40 year plan rather than a four year plan. And that's something that I saw as well. Um, and going to a school like Trinity high school uh, made it a lot easier decision to make a decision to go to Vanderbilt, to be honest. So that's why I always hmm. speak to my background and the uh, spaces that I've been in because to the core I've always just been myself and trying to really just dive into understanding those cultures and those spaces. to so figure out how to help people who look like me. And that's, the blessing within this all. Um, so when I got to Vanderbilt, though, um, yeah, I, I feel like I got on a long spiel about me playing football. So I got to – I played Vanderbilt, and I was a team captain three years in a row, which was a blessing. Um, and we can get more deeper into that. I know you probably have more questions. Sure. But that's, that was my journey, man, in sports, and, like, really what that all granted me. Yeah, that, that's that's cool. And thanks for sharing all all the you know personal information. Uh, I appreciate it. So, I think you know the first point that you mentioned, right? Uh, you know, playing um, NFL or sorry, American football is a whole different mindset because it, it's more than you know a physical or mental game. You have you know that you need to have a character or attitude uh, to play that game. Because every time I see NFL, you know, I I just can't believe how people are you know. Um, so ready to play such a you know it, it intense game in in every aspect uh, that that really mm -hmm. amazes me and and i also like the other fact that you were talking about you know you know what you need to do to get into college right you have you know maybe you can choose football or music or whatever you know what needs to be done and and you you aced it uh, and and you got all the college admission probably with the scholarship uh, great job on it uh, so I think that, 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 you know, teaches a lesson, right? You you have to know what you need to get done uh, in order yeah, to grow definitely. further. You have to understand the circumstances and, and you have to use your strength to, to, to go above right and beyond. You really, exactly. you really have to be self-aware really just in life, yep. understanding your environments that you're in, watching your back at all times and not to say that you're paranoid, but making sure you're understanding yep. where you are because you know, exactly. you just gotta always be on cue. Exactly. So, in, even if you're in, you know, top high pressure or new environments, for example, yourself, you are in like, you know, where in the one of the rich, probably the richest schools where people are driving great cars. You know, sometimes that can get into us that hey, you know, maybe I don't belong here, or maybe True. You know, I don't have that. Like, you know, you can t you can think the other way as well. You know, True. and and but that's not going to help you anyway. So once yeah. you're there, it's all about how can you grow from there? True, so, true. which is, which is what you've done. Um, thank, thanks for that. No, no problem. So, yeah. and, and yeah. And, and, you know, want to talk a little more about, uh, American football, but before that, I just also want to understand the later, later part of the journey after being a college captain. Okay. So what was, so after, you know, because what was your plan after the college football? Are were you were you targeting for NFL or any any football? You know, playing it at the professional level, definitely, or you wanted definitely. you know for certain reason, or were you trying to diverge and get into fitness? So what 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 was the plan back then? Definitely, definitely, I was always planning to go to the NFL. That's been the goal. That's every yeah. little kid who plays football's goal to go to the NFL. Sure. Um and yeah. 
So my journey in college, what brought me to, because um, I can't go without speaking on that. So my freshman year was really, uh, I came in under a really good coach and James Franklin, who was the head coach at Penn State right now. And he really taught me about yeah. leadership. He really taught us the fundamentals of success and what that looked like. Um, yeah, we had so we have core values that we like have to abide by, and anyone who he would call us out on the spot, and we have to name those four core values. Um, so like little things yeah. like that that he taught me that you have to have as a team and as a person. Like, what are your principles? Like, what are you, like what do you always have to have to your core? So understanding that, which was really good for a freshman year for a freshman guy coming into college. Uh, first and foremost, like I said. After that, I didn't play at all my freshman year. I redshirted on the field, which put me in a place of mm. obviously like, dang, I'm not that good. So that's every – I feel like a lot of kids go through that when they do go through the college journey. Some people are blessed enough to just be talented off the rip, and that's yeah. good as well. Um, I'm a person who has to learn the hard way, though. Um, and from there, I was blessed enough to play the my sophomore season. Uh, I started the first five games of the of the season, and then I got – bench the last like seven games of the season Oof. so that put me in a place of like like what are, like am i not good enough like what is going on so i had a conversation with uh some of the coaches and um just in my life i've always played football so i've gotten a lot of leadership from men who have taught me uh through coaching and through those talks so i had a conversation with first and foremost the head coach and he was just like all right really what do you want to do and he put it on me like i said what do you want to do and I wanted to stay. I wanted to get that education from Vanderbilt. And he he valued what I could bring to the table as a player. But he just mentioned that I just had to be consistent, basically. Just be a consistent player for him. And I visited another coach who was my position coach. And he actually had a conversation with me about how I was living off the field. And that's where it really put me put in perspective with my sophomore season that, all right, I have to be um, how I'm doing, what I'm doing in school. Um, really matters is going to roll over to what I'm doing on this football field. All right, how I'm treating, um, how I'm treating my friends, how I'm treating uh, my girlfriend or my fiance now, or how I'm treating anybody else off the field, or what I'm doing off the field. If I'm oversleeping, that stuff's going to roll over. Basically, is what I got from that conversation with him. So you know, that's really, like I said, the foundations of our. Right, what does this really look like? And my next season, I was fortunate enough to. Uh, I was able to start. I was starting safety, which was a great thing. Um, which my sophomore season, once I did learn that, I forgot to say, sorry. Um, that was my first year of learning, like, all right, this is my role. I know what I need to do. I had the conversation with the coaches. This is my role. And I was fortunate enough to be a special teams captain. The next season, I was fortunate enough to start safety. And with that comes a big like a big opportunity as well. Mm, and as the safety, you're called to make the plays and get everybody lined up before you even get lined up yourself. And I'm the yeah. oldest of 25 grandkids, so I've always been one of those guys who can be in the head and on the front lines helping people out, telling people where to go, and then managing that role. I have two little si two siblings as well, then that's a little anymore. Uh, but within that, that put me in an opportunity where – um, my play was like really showing on the field and people were uh, respecting what I was able to do uh, as a captain as well. So that was my second year being a captain. And my last season, I'll speak on, I had surgery after my junior season going into my senior mm. year. So that knocked me back a little bit. I had a pretty average senior season and coming off, I did have opportunities. I went to a little all-star game. Um, I had a little buzz. I had a meeting with the Rams but my journey was very interesting. So I was still trying to play football, still wanted and had that love to play football. But um, I got a call from somebody from Green Bay to come out for our scouting opportunity. So um, I took that, I uh, went and interviewed with the Green Bay Packers for a scouting opportunity. And I was still trying to play. So I was still talking to the GM, um, Really, like I said, well, the yeah. president, I guess, and all the other guys in the office really just talking about how I was still trying to play football. Um, and in that meeting, I still took it all serious. It was watching film and analyzing and critiquing the players how I needed to as a as a scout would. And I was yeah. very truthful in what I was saying. And um, 
truth be told, what I said, a lot of it came true for one of their uh, top draft picks as well. So I'll let that be that. Uh, man, with that, that was, like I said, that was my first interaction with the NFL, which was great. I'm glad I was able to even sit in a room like that and have a conversation and everybody talking to me. So I uh, had that opportunity, yeah. was fortunate enough to do that. And after that, man, um, I didn't hear back from any teams to play football. And I just went mm-hmm. all in with uh, my life. <laughs> I really went all in with yeah. my life. And within that, I'll uh, leave that to you because you had to – uh, did I answer that question, though, that you have for me? And the NFL journey, yeah. what was the question after the NFL journey? No, just just want to understand how you transitioned to, you know, after scouting, probably, you know, into fitness or, like, what you're doing now. So just, just want trying to understand – that how that all plays into point. it. Yeah, sorry about that. How yeah. that all plays into it. So, like, everything I just said, man, it like I said, it taught me as a human being. It taught me, you know, like, all right, how are you supposed to conduct yourself? All right, how, what are the routines you're supposed to have as a person? And what does the work ethic look like to be an all-SEC safety or to be a captain of yeah. other people, a leader of other people? What does that look like? Um, and a lot of people... Um, I seen the best of both worlds. I mentioned the coaches that I had, Coach Franklin, who taught me the foundations of success and camaraderie and team and what that looks like. My coach after that, it was, um, it was he taught me the game of football at a high level, which was very good. Coach Mason, he taught me the game of football, yeah. and it was very good. So I understand what it takes to play football. Um, those two yeah. combinations, that gave me the understanding of like what it takes to have a good program or what it takes to yep. be a good player, a good leader. So I encompassed all of that information and everything that I got from the Vanderbilt education, and I started a management consulting firm rather than it being a sports and fitness firm. I do train a lot of individuals um, on the fitness side and to play football because, like I mentioned, I want to be fortunate enough. Yep. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship offer to play football, so why not give back to help other kids who look like me uh, get that opportunity as well with the knowledge that I was able yeah. to get from coaches like James Franklin and Coach Mason and uh, really uh, all the coaches in my life have taught me to, to give it back. That's that's the that's why we're yeah. here. Nobody's here forever. I agree, I agree. Uh, and thanks for sharing that, you know, um, learning all, taking all your learnings, you know, particularly from, you know, great coaches and, uh, you know, playing the great, game and then using it to you know in your either in your business or helping other kids to get there is, is pretty great uh th- thanks for sharing it and i'm just curious to understand right since you have been you know is you know nfl scout uh be you know been uh played football for long and i'm sure you pretty much know ins and outs of it so just curious to understand what it would take for a player to be at the nfl level right in the sense, I know they have to perform consistently and they need to exceed the bar because there are so many um, players out there, you know, competing at the highest level. So just just curious to understand what can it, what does it take to get into the league of top, you know, one percent. So be it, be it, you know, physical, mental, or just the game skill set. So just just want to understand it from all aspects of the game. Got you, got you. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, my man, what you're asking is, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you want to know, like, what it takes to play in the NFL? Is that the big question or just in that top 1% yep. in general as a human being? I want to make sure I'm direct. No, uh, just the NFL. Uh, just the NFL. First, maybe okay, we can also go, get into the human being. Part okay, got you. Well, for, I don't know what it takes to get into the NFL because I wasn't <laughs> able to get there. So, let's just say that. But I am so, a person who... I am a person who I'm able to see the game and understand why people are able to fit into those situations yeah. because I had to be honest with myself. So for me, first and foremost, the reason I believe I wasn't able to get to the NFL is because I'm 5'9", 185 when I'm at my best physical peak. You know what I mean? And that's good. There's some there's some guys who are 5'9", 185 like Tyron Matthew who are in the NFL, but they also run 4'5". I was a guy who probably yep. ran a four seven, and I was okay with that because I knew the game of football mm-hmm. and I had enough intuition and um, I knew understood angles and I put myself in position to be successful um, against other guys who mm-hmm. may have been faster than me or quicker than me. Um, but in order to get to that level, 
like I said, you have to be you have to be able to run that fast. You have to be able to jump that high. And I was a guy who athletically, I just wasn't the best athletically because I was a good football player and that was okay. And um, so what it takes to get to that level for guys, if you are a guy who are five, who is 5'9", 185, somewhere in that range, you better be able to run very fast. <laughs> you have to have great speed. Yeah. And because I did it, yeah. um, that's why I accept what I'm doing now in training and developing athletes. I got my speed and agility certification so I can understand the ins and outs of speed and how to break that down and how to like I said, yeah. teach another kid all right, what is all right, what he did wrong in order to run that slow 40. All right, how do we break that down? So uh, I've done those things. I've got testimonies from kids where they have, I have brought their 40 times down and them doing the consistent work because it's always on those athletes who are doing the work first. Always understand that. Um, But secondly, uh, understanding football, you have to know what's going on on the football field in order to be a successful football player. You can be gifted athletically, but everybody, 90, 98%, 99% of the NFL players are great athletes. So when you say that, you have to know, you have to have one up. So that's where technique and understanding the game comes in. So breaking those two down yeah. uh, from there, some people are just blessed. Like LeBron James, let's take him for instance, yeah. he's in the NBA. He's a guy who is athletic, just as all those other guys are athletic. But he just has something that's in him that is just different. Um, exactly. Let's say, oh, Derek Henry, for instance. Like, there are guys who are big. There are guys who are fast and athletic. But that he's just different. Like, that's just different. Yep. But, like I said, when it comes to the others, what separates those guys is the technique and the amount of study and uh, film that they're doing. Uh, and understanding, all right, when, this, when they line up in this formation, I know this is coming. So I'm going to take the gamble and try to, take a, to get a pick. Um, rather than just yeah. like guarding him and staying right here, and so that's where the yeah. I said that little detail starts coming in to separate the one percent uh, to understand gotcha. yeah, how to be successful in that game. Yeah, cool, makes sense. So it's uh, you know, first the first and you know the basic stuff is being athletic. So that's the basic, the most basic requirement, I guess. But on top of it, you know, skill and and the game awareness is the most ultimate cutting edge, right? So if you have that game awareness, if you can do all the analysis and if you can predict or you know if you can have some sort of intuition mm, uh, due to all the work that you have done, then that can probably, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that can po- probably differentiate you from other players, and and which is what what we all need. Uh, definitely, definitely. That, that's cool. Yep. And, and just, uh, also want to understand the fitness part of it, right? Yes, sir. Because, um, you were talking about, you know, you have to be very athletic, uh, which also means that you got to train more and more. So how much time did you train, uh, during your, your football career or how much time do you think current athletes should spend on training versus focusing on the skill? Um, so, man, all that is a full package. You can't, you can't have one without the other. Uh, so you gotta find, like I said, you gotta find the balance to put it all in to respect them. Um, so for instance, uh, in the summer, when it's the off season, like you have to like put Mm -hmm. your body through it. Um, there is a training schedule that you can have in the summer. It is time to work on that speed. Very, very heavy work on that. Uh, get stronger first and foremost. You definitely have to get stronger in the off season. Secondly, you have to be in yeah. shape. You really have to take the time in the summertime to be in shape because you're not going to get as much conditioning during the season because you're going to have to go over those calls and the formations and little minute things that comes to the game of football. Um, so like I said, the summertime, the off season is really, really time to get it in. Um, do two a days if necessary because I know a lot of kids are they have practice at home I said they have practice at home they have practice at school so when you have practice at school yep. that's good that's all fine and dandy but either right after that practice you need to be getting you some extra work in rather than that's an hour um, let, just do an hour just do an hour I did that in high school and that's what it looks like I was 5'9", 185 172 in high school and I wasn't fast wasn't the fastest so with that being said I had to I had to have an extra gear I put in extra work in that off season so 
understanding how much work you have to put in on top of you just going to practice alone. That's what's going to separate you from the 1% to get those uh, college scholarship offers. Um, Secondly, when you are in college, um, so for instance, when you in the off season, I'll just go to the summer first and then we'll get into the season. Um, As a college athlete, when you're in the summer, like I said, that off season, you very much so do those same things, but whether your schedule, I know some guys, they have to report on campus in June and that's where workouts start. Mm-hmm. So if you're already doing workouts with your team, you can either work out before your workouts, whether that's four in the morning. I was waking up at four in the morning sometimes to go um, pitch tennis balls um, and roll out just to get ready for the workouts. But I was getting my hand and knock, hand knock coordination together um, and I was getting my body right before we got workouts. All right, workouts happen. Um, we finished that, take some time, recover, talk, chat up with some of the guys. All right, we go out to the field. We go get some uh, some DB drills going. We start catching footballs off the jugs machine. That's the type of work that has to go in in order to be like all SEC or all Big Ten or whatever conference you're in in the summer. That's the type of work that has to take place. In season, um, you definitely still have to look at go to practice, do what you're doing, but that's where – recovery is very big, making sure you're taking care of your body and you're healthy. Because if you're not healthy, yep. you're not going to be able to have any success on the football field. Um, secondly, that's where the extra film comes in. Because like I said, if you're doing the extra film, that's going to give you that advantage to understand what coverage or what coverage is going to come. Or when they're running this coverage, what route to run as a quarterback or a receiver, or if you're a DB or a linebacker, um, when they're in this formation, I know this is coming. So it gives you that little, let's say that inkling, that advantage, those instincts to make plays. And you got to play the game yep. to change the game. So that's my motto when it comes to playing yep. football. You got to play the game to change the game. If you're not doing that, like you're not going to be able to elevate and go anywhere else. You're going to stay where you're at. Yep. yep. Well, th- uh, that's great. Thanks for sharing it. So because, you know, if I can sum it up a little bit, um, it's more like, there is a, a certain type of drills or workout that you need to go through during on and off season, but it's also about how much extra effort that you can put in by being self-aware, right? Because if you're not athletic, you know, you got to put in more hours just to focus on athletic, you know, uh, being more athletic. Exactly. Or if you have to work on certain skill, just spend more time on um, the skill. So it's all about putting that a little extra effort. Um, and, and, you know, going to gym at 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, I can... I don't think I can do this in life. In this life, at least. Uh, you definitely get rewarded. It really takes uh, dedication and pa- You get rewarded from that. That's the blessing in life. Like, like, yeah. said, like Even as a human being today, like, when, in my business, when I am waking up early and I'm working out and I'm doing, I'm being productive before I even go to work or um, I'm doing my financial numbers in the morning or whatever it is, like, I'm feeling better. I feel more in my purpose. Yep. Uh, so like I said, you just exactly. get more drive yeah. and there's more reward behind that and say getting right with my mind, meditating, whatever that is, if you're praying, what yep. have you, like I said, just getting started and getting your, uh, getting everything going. And once those juices are flowing, um, you, you start having more clarity and becoming self-aware. And that's what that gives you. Exactly. You are able to understand your goals and start meeting those goals and start marking them off. Cool. You you are exactly uh, talking like a, you know a real pro player because that that's the football or that like that's the you know uh, play terminology right? Hey man, just just get the work done. You know, put more effort in even in regular life. Uh, whatever you learn in the game, just you know applying it to the regular life. You know, being uh, you know on top of things, being very productive. You know, getting that extra time or putting that extra time to get things done. And and uh, you know that that I think it it eventually plays into the life, right? Yes, sir. You definitely got to handle your business. Yep. And say, at the end of the day, <laughs> everything that's going on in my life and everything that's going on in your life is like on you. You know what I mean? It's on me. So like you got to yep. deal with that stuff head on. And however it comes yep. is how it comes. But know what you want and know where you're going. Yep, exactly. Um, that that's another lesson. You got to you are you are in charge of you or you are responsible for yourself. It's all about how you want to take it. Um, and how good you want to take it, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, and then I have, uh, you know, because I, <clears throat> so on the, on the websites or on the LinkedIn page, uh, you know, this one word caught my attention, right? So, which is increasing human performance at all the levels. So, which is the goal of raw performance that, that uh, you have started. So, can you, um, 
explain that term human performance at all levels so what what, you, what, what exactly are you referring to yeah so uh, uh like i said i i thought of this idea when i was done with football uh really i thought of the name and the brand and all of that information yeah when i was finished with football and i was dealing with real life and as a football player you're always going to hit that all right what is it what's going on where are you going to go and for me it was a big decision like i said i had been playing it since i was six to seven years old so in doing that um, it kind of becomes your identity so yeah. i still am a part of it and i'm still doing things around the game of football um but yep. within that, I have to understand that I'm a human being. Like, I'm not a football player. Like, I still have to catch myself, like, saying, like, I still play because I do not. Like, I even have dreams that I'm playing football sometimes, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, so it's crazy. But within that, I'm a human being. We are all human beings. Like, my mom, my dad, however they treat me, like, they have to treat me like a human being rather than their son now that I'm an adult. Understanding things like that. Um, I was able to like really put into perspective. So learning how to become a better a better football player or a better athlete, I was granted, I was blessed and granted that opportunity to do so. Um, and I think, like you said, that rolls over into being a human being. Like, all right, I know what it takes to like, have a good routine or to have fitness and help you chase your dreams. Like little things like that that I was granted being a captain and a leader that's just been in me. So, um, Really, like I said, within my purpose, I was given it truly uh, by God with everything that I've been blessed with. I have my master's of education, and while I was doing those studies, I literally was studying sports organizations and music and how you can utilize sports and music to teach kids and grow as human beings mm -hmm. and on the academic side rather than just teaching them that sport or that uh that instrument you know what i mean so yeah, um yeah. Like I said, taking those studies and applying it to teaching these kids there's still things that i have to do obviously but i'm only at the beginning of my journey um yeah and obviously i have i train some some of the kids who i train i also train their fathers on the fitness side and we're talking about fatherhood and how to grow like i said in that aspect because we're all human beings everybody has their own stuff that they're dealing with um, my fiance she does the same thing she has basketball players that she trains um boys and girls mm -hmm. and she's also training uh women's fitness and she has the same conversations with a lot of the moms and women that she trains about just improving their human performance and what's going on in everyday life and how to get through those things um, she's more so on the nutrition side where she does the juicing and everything and helps them grow through that journey. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's just overall about being a human being. Um, and we do do, like I said, we do the training, but along with that, we do, we go around to speaking at high schools and colleges, delivering guest lectures, like I'm speaking to you today, mm -hmm. because people do just need to hear yeah. it sometimes. And I don't want to exactly. just talk to athletes. I want to talk to some kids who are just regular students and, been yep. have been fortunate enough to do that and speak to some kids who are regular students to um, deliver like skills of leadership and how to chase their dreams and what it is they want and who they want to be gotcha that makes sense uh, actually that makes a lot of sense so it's it's beyond being uh you know at, at the best in athletics or studies or in any particular yes, sir. uh categories so it's it's more about how you can be a better human yes sir uh so and also training their parents or you know understanding their circumstances and and training their um parents or and the kids and and you know everyone around you so that they all or we all can grow to be a better yeah. human if i understand that's the correctly. Model. And particularly it's very important exactly exactly and that's pretty it's very important for the kids and particularly the you know underrepresented or minority kids because they have a lot to figure out compared to other kids, right? So I think this kind of model or motto really helps uh, the sure. kids to grow and, and be a better, you know, human and, and yes, um, you know, de deal with life because it, it's going to it's gonna hit, hit, hit you hard at some point. So mm -hmm. you have to be very, very prepared for it. Cool. Th thanks for sharing it. And, and sure. so can you share a little bit about the physical and mental aspects of the raw performance, right? So what, 
how are those important and and what can a person do to be a well rounded you know because i i really think both physical and mental performance are equally you know are yeah, both physical yeah. and mental fitness is equally important right because we have gyms to go to for you know to work on the physical performance or fitness but when it comes to the mental it's it's our own journey we have very mm-hmm. little tools or knowledge to deal with it so even even in the regular gyms it's it's a challenging part right you have to understand your body and there are so many trainers out there who was who is preaching you the same techniques that they preach everyone but in my opinion that's not going to work for everyone so mm-hmm. i think so it's it's more than what they can teach us it's also understanding our body better understanding our lifestyle better and then mm-hmm. you know working accordingly so mm-hmm. i just want to understand your pos- uh, perspective you know on the fit- physical and mental fitness maybe we can start with physical first definitely definitely so they both go- do go hand in hand like you mentioned like the physical is just as important as the mental aspect and on the physical yeah. like i said that's going to that's where you're building that mental toughness So when I'm putting yeah. my body when I'm testing my body and challenging my body physically uh, whether that's weight or whether that's running for a minute on the treadmill I know at at speed 10 um that may be hard but doing that like 10 times that's testing your body that's pushing your body that's building yeah. mental toughness um when it comes to lifting weights it may not have you don't even have to lift a bunch of weights I don't even like that so just repping out and see like I let, I have 50 reps to do of 40 pound dumbbells or something like that and and burning those out you start sculpting your body and understanding really functionally how you're supposed to look because the, all that weight on your shoulders doesn't feel good when you are doing heavy lifting like that and football that's why you have to do that because you're going against other people's bodies when you're a regular person um uh, like I said just sculpt out rep out uh, just do a lot of reps don't you can go heavy weight if you want to look buff both buff and bulk that's cool too like say i have periods where i need to bulk up as well and i do do that um so like i said but you got to know what seasons you are in and what you want like i said before but um like i said that's where that's where the physical come in is on the mental aspect like i already spoke on um we as you continue to be consistent physically you're already going to be improving mentally that's going to increase your mental okay. being mentally sharp Uh, secondly yeah. when it comes to the mental side just in general um that just goes back to just understanding like i said where like what is your goals why are you doing what you're doing just being intentional like are you being intentional with your yeah. life that's where the mental aspect yeah. comes in um uh, understanding your day to day whether you're an entrepreneur or working in a corporate office if you're working in a corporate office is it somewhere that you don't like um i've done that route and i'm even working somewhere now but i've done that route before and when i was there i was like i know either i'm going to get fired or i'm going to have to quit this job and show sure enough um i ended up getting let go due to budget cuts and covid happens so like little things mm-hmm. like that happen in life and i could have took that as like oh i got to run but thankfully i did have my business um but at the end of the day that still like hurt my pockets as a human being like nobody yeah. wants to take a hit like that but that teaches that taught me like all right to always have an emergency fund and always know um that anything can happen always understand that that anything can happen and within doing that yeah. now I know how to move accordingly um like I said so that's where the mental aspect comes in and uh, if you want to scale through a company scale through a company if you want to have your own business have your own business but understanding where you are mentally and how to move forward in your life and progressing your life intentionally is where the mental aspect comes in for me and what I teach my athletes gotcha that that's interesting um right i know i mean first point is so true which is about uh you know physical fitness eventually plays or enhances you know mental health which is which is so true because you know you gain all that confidence and you feel so good and you feel so productive that obviously enhances mental health uh, but the other aspect of it is you know being uh, intentional about what you are doing and being aware right even in the game itself you got to be aware game awareness is everything in any any sport be it cricket football or or you know just, just name any game game awareness is the most crucial part you know the similar applies to life as well right so you have to be aware of and intentional of what you want to do and and where you want to go yeah. so that 
have, you know, that gives you so much confidence and so much, you know, comfort so that you don't have to wonder or you don't have to feel lost and you can be, um, lost. you don't have you to can, be lost. Exactly. Um, so that way you are focusing on, you know, or you're enhancing the mental health part of it. Yes. So, which, which also means that it, it's not because I think mental health is, um, very broad to, to say, right. But, but everything comes down to how your life is or if you, whether you are going to be, you know, and how you are living it. Yeah. Right. In the sense, uh, if you are be, you know, if you're working to be a player or, you know, an athlete, and if you are not putting the effort or if you're not getting there, then you are, you already, you are already down by a certain extent. So if something else hits you, you're, you're down fully. So I think you have to be aware of what it takes to be in the role that you want, that you are, yeah, that you are in and the, to the level that you want to get to. Definitely. So that way, and and work for it. That way, I think your mental health gets a, gets a lot better. Hmm. I think I, uh, I I see I see what you're saying. Um, that yeah, just th thanks for sharing it, man. No problem at all. Having a vision, yeah. so you get it on the head. Exactly. Uh, ha having the vision for it and 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 working for it, right? So it's nothing. Good. It's all about. Let, let's be real. There are there are no shortcuts, and it's all about. Right. Putting, having that vision and, and, and doing the work for it. Kevin Gates, does, this is an example of what I mentioned, like music and sports being able to teach human beings. Kevin Gates says, mm -hmm. um, a vision without action is merely a dream. So it's about the action. It's about the grind. It's about the hustle. Yeah. Um, take that, around that, that is so true. That, that's so deep too. Um, I mean, first thing is it, if you're just, if you just have action, that that's not going to get you anywhere. In fact, that you, you know, you will be running in the wrong path. Mm. So which absolutely there is no use, right? Because if you're running in the wrong path, I mean, you're going to get lost at some point, you'll crash them. but if you just have vision and if you're not putting into action, mm. I mean, it doesn't matter either. You're, you're going to get lost in mind. You'll mm. feel so depressed or, you know, you mm. feel really lost in life as well. That's so true. I think it's the vis vision plus action. Uh, that gives you the result or, or the life that you want to. Mm, yes, that's that's cool. Uh, that's yes, great. Sir. Thanks. Thanks for sharing it. And, and similarly, what, what, you know, you were saying sports plus music, right? Uh, I never thought, I know, I mean, I enjoy music. I, I need it, you know, while working as well. So, but what aspects of music are you saying? And uh, what, how does the combination of sports plus music enhances the performance or, uh, or, or the life of a person? Okay. So, um, when it comes to the sports and music, uh, how I view it, like I said, I view it all as an art, first and foremost. So you consider all musicians artists, right? Um, sure. I think sports in the same way. Um, and I tell my athletes the same thing, like for me, uh, and just, I don't even use me. Who's your favorite NFL player? Who's uh, your favorite? Patrick player? Mahomes. Okay, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, he's perfect. That's the perfect example. So now, yeah. because Patrick Mahomes does the side pass, he was being creative. He was being himself. He was just going out there, running around, and you knew that was Pat Mahomes because he was creatively. That was art. That was art. Now yeah. you're walking around just like Steph Curry with that three. He just chose to shoot that far back because he's been oh, playing man. the game that long. It was, that's his art. But it, it started a trend where little kids want to shoot threes. Now people are more taken to quarterbacks throwing sidearm now that Patrick Mahomes was um, except throwing sidearm because that was something that he was doing creatively. That was his art. And you see the same thing in music uh, where, I mean, somebody, there was an auto-tune phase back then. Now, then everybody started doing auto-tune. Now you got a lot of 808 drums that are being used. So, like, so those are how I see the two go hand in hand. Um, and as a human being, like, I truly believe, like, even you, Rohit, you have this podcast. This is something that you felt you wanted to do creatively and put out into the world. I really believe that every person should have something that they're doing creatively um, and, and putting out and giving to the world. And a raw performance is now that for me. But as I mentioned, like, in sports for these kids, that's that for them. That's their outlets. Like, allow it to be their outlets, but teach them, meet them where they are. 
Um, and if it's music, so there's a lot of kids, some kids, like I said, regular, some regular students, they don't play sports. So, but I know they love music, so I can utilize that music and teach them through certain lyrics, or I can get them up there uh, and speaking in front of other kids, uh, where it's not even a poem, yeah. it's just they're public speaking about a topic, a rapper that they enjoy. But that's building that kid's yeah. confidence, his ability to speak in front of people, and what else is teaching him individually? It may be fear at first, but he's going through that, and he's able to learn and grow from that. And a lot of kids aren't given that opportunity. So that's how I see those two going hand in hand and how it really all correlates and how we can, like I said, improve human performance through sports and music. Gotcha. That that, that makes sense. So I think now I have a clear sense of what you have been talking about it, you know, at raw performance, right? Because my understanding has it been a little different. Uh, but now, now I completely see what you are doing and, you know, what's your goal with it. So, and, and the, and to your point in terms of being creative or taking your life as an art and, and being some, doing something creative, be it at work or, you know, personally or, uh, in, in whatever the form, I think that's very important for, for any person that, that gives that extra, probably the satisfaction or, or, you know, that gives you that maybe confidence as well. Um, it's called your but purpose. I think that is very important to be exactly your purpose, purpose that that's it. Yeah, that's what yep, you want to that, live. That's your it. purpose. Live in. Don't run from it. You exactly. Live in. Exactly. You got to face it. So, and and the other part in terms of using sports and music um, to change the human performance. So I now understand that. So you want to work, you know, go to the kids or who are playing sports and music, and you know, be where they are. And help them grow in the ways that, um, and help them train and help them grow in in multiple definitely. aspects. So is is yeah, that yeah. what the raw performance is about? It's it's oh, more yeah, than yeah, you know physical. What we do. So I'll explain it a little bit in more detail, man. So like I said, we do. Yes, please. The main goal is to enhance human performance. Um, but along with that, the first first thing that we're doing, you have to like build up some capital. It's performance training, and like I mentioned before, that is training and developing athletes. We do basketball training. We do football training as well. And that's where I dive deep in helping high school kids get to the college level or some youth athletes really just develop into becoming better, stronger, more confident and getting to the high yeah. school level, going to a better high school. But it's really about that elevation in life too, because I want them to succeed and be in great spaces. So um, a lot of players yeah. that I played with are now coaches. So utilizing those connections, help these kids get college scholarships is really why I'm doing it on that side um, on the sports team. Yeah, as I mentioned, we do guest lectures and that's where, as you discussed, the, where I'm utilizing the music is called, um, I call it sports and hip hop pedagogy. I utilize that curriculum and I go around to schools and organizations and I do cheat, uh, teach and develop kids utilizing those two, um, whether it's in the classroom, like I said, or our company um, along with that. At the last end, we do executive training. I've helped some guys grow as individuals and leaders. Uh, some conversations that we're having now, um, but also on the sports side is more specific and just teaching and developing kids. Um, um, they're now growing into the ranks in the college coaching ranks. Some of them are at the high school level. Um, and we also, on the executive training side, when we say as the goal is much bigger, but that's where we're at right now. I'm just going to speak on that. Gotcha. It totally makes sense. So, so I mean, which is, which is a great work. I think you, may, everyone may not see the vision or impact immediately, but I think that's going to play big in, in the long run, uh, which is which is what you're aiming for, I guess. Uh, that, that's great. So in terms of training crits and what, what exactly you do, for example, um, if people listening to the podcast want to understand how can they, you know, they train other kids or how can they raise their own son in a much better fashion? So what, what, what is that you teach to the kids and, and, uh, what aspects that you cover and how do you think they can be taught better, be it at home or at school? Okay. Got you. Um, I feel like it's like, I'm going to sound repetitive or redundant. Um, but you got to study the craft of whatever yeah. it is you're doing. If it is on the sports side, if it's football, then you need to dive into understanding football for you. Like, so you can understand it, whoever you are out there listening. 
um, on the other side of it is basketball, and then it's the same thing. But um, first, that that's where it starts. You have to enjoy and love what you're doing first. Secondly, um, finding if it is some YouTube videos to study um, sk the skills of the sport that you're trying to play or a new skill that you're trying to learn. Maybe try to maybe you got the basics down. You're trying to all right. Get dive a little bit deeper. You're trying to go into 102. YouTube is a library of information. You have it at your fingertips. Just go to it and learn something and go out there and run till you can't run and do whatever it is that you need to do to get better in that aspect. If you are a parent that's doing that, you say that's even better. You know the problem. You know, don't overwork your kid first and foremost. Do not overwork your kid. Um, secondly, if you're a parent, do not live your dreams through your kid. Please do not do that. Let your kid have a <laughs> yeah. love for it and a joy for it and want to improve because otherwise um, when you're always in the front trying to tell him how to do this and that, as he gets older, that still he's still going to expect that and he's going to just sit back and be expecting somebody to step in for him his entire life. So um, definitely please do not do not do that as parents. Um, <laughs> like I said, let your kids find the love for it and the joy for it. If they say that they want to improve, all right, let's go. Like I said, start getting, you get on the YouTube, learn what you need to learn, help what you need to help on. If you do have the means, find uh, somebody who does have expertise in that area and get your kid right in that regard. But otherwise, like I said, I was, a, you got to figure it out sometime. This is just what it is. Just do the work. Yeah. There's no secret. You just got to yeah. do the work and be, um, and I have to, to get better at it as well, but like understanding other people's perspective, like especially when you are a parent, like and you may think everything is is right and fine and dandy. And even as a trainer and as a coach, uh, developing kids and people, like I have to understand that, like I gotta see where other people are coming from because sometimes I'm like, dang, why didn't you tell me that I was wrong? You know what I mean? I want my kids to be able to tell me that because sometimes they are yeah. right, but sometimes they do have a uh, I'm right syndrome, but they're wrong. And I'm like, dude, you're like, you're just so dead wrong right now, but you have this. <laughs> so like, those are the conversations we're having, but at the end of the day, like I said, just yeah. do the work. That's all it is. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, that's cool. Uh, and I like, I like when you said about, um, as a parent, you need to understand your kids a lot better yeah, and also please. don't, <laughs> don't, you know, uh, try to live your dreams through kids. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, that's what most parents do, particularly in Asian countries, uh, that, that happens a lot. Um, mm -hmm. so because, you know, if you, if you, if you are not, let's say a, a particular, if you're not an NFL player and if you almost got there now you are like, Hey, you, you're trying to force your kid that, Hey, you know, kid, you are, you are, you, you got, to, you had to do it for me. It's crazy. And it's just then they, I think exactly. It and it's, it's not, it's too. Sorry, I didn't cut you fair? off. I think it happens in every culture, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can totally see why, and that's that's the easiest way, right? Because, um, I mean, maybe maybe I would do that too. Uh, but understanding mm -hmm. that it it's okay, <laughs> you know, I, I I really hope not. You know, maybe <laughs> through this podcast, you know, I I, 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 I can be more good. aware. Exactly, I yes. I, <laughs> I really um, I don't really want to do it, but some, I may, you know, unintentionally or intentionally force them mm -hmm. or, you know, guide them through that path because I have seen that path. For sure. But Sometimes I have but, a two-year-old daughter myself, my man. I have a two-year-old daughter. And even to this day, like, I'm, like, so I'm a guy who, like, I don't want to over-coach. I don't want to, like, critique and do everything, do too much. And sometimes I can find myself, like, just let her do her thing and be a kid right now. She, she wants to stand on top <laughs> of the freaking laundry basket. Uh, tipped upside down yeah. like it would be easy for me to tell her to get down and stop but like what is she really doing like she's just being a kid <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean so like yeah, yeah. Like that, that you have to like say just to put into perspective because we can be busy with our days and something else frustrating us and get upset but so it's just about yep. so yeah, understanding other people and just being aware of where you are and what you're doing exactly uh, that that goes a long way um, you know put yourself into perspective. That's, that's the lesson of the day for me. Um, and being self-aware and also doing the work. And, and if, if it's, if it's for a kid, you know, and making sure that are try you know, teaching them to do the work for themselves. And, uh, I like your other in point in terms of, you know, don't 
coach the kid kid all the time because when when they grow you won't be there or you, you know you won't be there yeah. <laughs> with them you know all all their life too right yeah. so you have to let them live the life and and mm-hmm. only just be a guiding factor don't don't coach yes be yes every single thing direction. for sure guide exactly um, but don't hold their hand yeah. someone exactly um and and that which also means that you are setting up setting them up for failure in the Deserve. long run they might confidence. be great initially but exactly you're not able to build um, confidence that's good. exactly and so i have seen some of my friends where their parents are like on top of their you know decisions all the time which mm. doesn't always were great particularly when it comes to you know the later parts of the life where you have to make some crucial decisions yeah. uh, be it with you know marriage or or kids or you know just jobs yes, so those are the decisions that you know a person should make and and particularly if you are if you are being in the top 1 2% in any profession then you have to make sure that i mean many decisions have to be made in in a quick time so if you are if you are, i think training kids to make those decisions independently and making sure that they are not doing the wrong way at least in the initial st- stages and uh, letting them be and and uh, letting them th- live the life on their own you know way Yes. Which, and then you can just probably act as a you know guardrail to make sure that hey you're going in the right direction they're not deviating Man, much they exactly they can bump their heads they can bump their heads but don't don't let them fall off don't let them fall off the cliff Ex- exactly um cool i think i think that's 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 really interesting and and then um when it comes to the executives you know i see that this is what you're doing for kids which is very good and i think this is something that every parent needs to understand but when it comes to the executive training what all you do um so on the executive training side i'm still building out that side a little bit deeper mm-hmm. um, especially as i begin to bring in employees into the organization uh but first and yep. foremost um uh, like i said we start understanding i want them to understand who they are so whether that's a my myers briggs personality test have them take one of those if they've never done before just so they understand like what type of person they are and what are their uh, uh, their inclinations like what are their habits so so they start studying themselves because it's about self development at the end of the day and once you're able to do that mm-hmm. um obviously you have to study your craft and when you're when I'll just utilize first and foremost the coaches who I've helped um you're a leader you have to be a leader of young men so if you're a leader of young men you have to understand first what is what does it mean to be a leader all right um and when it comes to being a leader uh what is the the biggest one is what what not to do all right what not to do and <laughs> yep. it kind of goes into what i mentioned already not really uh, i'm not going to bombard you with my way and what i want you to do is not that boss mentality you know what i mean it's not anything yep. like that you just have to really understand the principles so if you're a position coach what are your principles as the as the position coach and from there your guys have to go there they have to be themselves underneath that little umbrella all right and underneath that umbrella then they understand what the team's principles are hopefully they have that with the head coach but like i said hopefully some of the guys that i helped develop become head coaches so that's what that executive training looks like um at this point a lot of those guys they have the information themselves and they can do the work themselves because they're adults so they can understand the football yep. side and me myself I'm only 27 years old so I'm still studying the game of football to learn it at a much broader level to um give out information to one to other coaches because I can give it all to the kids right now because that's what it's about but when it comes to giving it to other um adults like myself and teaching people who are going to be employees then it has to be a lot deeper I have to dive in to, into it on a deeper level on a deeper level so that's where that come in and that's where the executive training looks like right now um god willing we're going to be into the point where uh like i said we go into actual organizations and do mental development and fitness classes and courses with them so that's the level that we're trying to get on like i said we're doing the work right now on that we're still building some leverage in that regard um uh, and lastly uh we call it executive training but helping high school and high school coaches and high school coaches and college coaches 
just help whether that's team clinics, uh, yeah. little things like that to help with their team camaraderie, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, to totally makes the, sense. In, in, in a way, that yeah. Yep, totally makes sense. In a way, putting, you know, a little perspective into coaches' viewpoints as well so that Definitely. they all understand the players or kids um, or the game a little better so that they can be a better coach and eventually grow into, into you know, next positions, right? Sure. Okay, sure. That, that's it, cool. Uh, it all thanks starts. For... It all starts. I'll, I appreciate that, man. But it all starts with who they are as a human being. I always go back to that because... It, yep. Uh, one, we have to be able to connect with each other. The energy has to be there. Secondly, um, you have to give me who you are. You have to be authentic with me in order for me to help you grow as a human being authentically. So, so that's where yep. that, that's the biggest one. True. Agree. Uh, and and you know, it's it's not just you know you have to be authentic. It's not just in in uh, in, in in one particular segment. It's it's throughout the life or throughout any connections or throughout any network, right? So if you're talking to me, you know, if you, if you're not being our authentic self, then we are not really doing a great job. Right. So I think that is something that probably, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, you're just not being you. And that's a sad thing. Exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, and, and that, that, and that's what this podcast is about as well. You know, be open and authentic, uh, and, and be, that's be right. yourself. So, you know, I, I got this little tattoo as well, which is like, hey, uh, be I like you. That. Um, I like that. That's yeah. I, you need those exactly. reminders. Exactly. So, I like, exactly. You need those reminders. Uh, like, you know, be yourself. It's uh, in, in this world, I think at some point I was in a stage that I was, you know, um, I was getting into pressure myself with a with lot of my thoughts, uh, which, which are great. But, you know, those are, you know, you know, maybe fitting into, you know, because I was in a different, I was in a circle where my thoughts didn't match. I was like, I had to constantly remind myself to be myself and it's okay. Mm-hmm. If thoughts don't, you know, di- didn't sync up with mm-hmm. others, but you got to be yourself so that, you know, mm-hmm. if you, whenever, because, you know, a particular network or a particular time isn't the, isn't permanent, right? You, you will move on and you will evolve. But mm-hmm. if you stop being yourself, you will not, you will never move on. You will never evolve. So that's, exactly. I think that was, a, that was the time then where, where I got this tattoo. I was like, Hey, you gotta be you. And, and, you know, and this podcast, that's what this podcast is about as well. You know, be really open and authentic. Um, that way you it, it makes your life easy as well. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, it's, a, it's crazy. You say that, you know, right? that um, yeah. piggybacking yeah. off of that is I have one, I have a tattoo on my arm the same way. And it's a, it's a reminder for me. Um, and the conversations, what you said, you said your thoughts were not as great. And it all starts in your mind. And they, that's that mental fitness that we talk about. I didn't talk about like that positive self-talk. I talk to myself a lot. And that's, you have to do those things. And my tattoo artist was a yeah. guy who was big on the law of attraction. And really what that means and really what you're supposed to put out. And the tattoo that like we ended up coming together on was, uh, and I thought myself, but he ended up doing the art on it, was have faith. Stay in touch with your dreams and commitments. Your resources are yep. far greater than you can ever imagine. Agree. Um, I totally agree. Um, you and, and I really like this point about law of attraction as well, right? Um, and also, you really have to have faith. And you really also have to understand that there are so many resources. It's just you blocking Mm-hmm. yourself you know if you're not tapping onto the those resources yes, sir. right uh, and particularly in this world of technology you can always ping you know any coach i'm sure someone will respond who can who can guide you right <laughs> yep uh, you got this right yeah. here well let me be, get my real phone you got this right here yeah yeah this, this thing has everything yeah. go go utilize it for some good exactly you, you really have to, un, you know, have that faith, use those resources and, and make mm-hmm. sure, um, you know, you, you make them count and work for it. Uh, and, and have, but while doing that, you gotta be yourself, um, and an authentic self too. Cool. Uh, su- such, a, a great reminder for, for all of us. So, you know, I was thinking, I've been thinking about this whenever you, when you were saying that one of the coach, you know, always, you know, and I've 
who is uh, who is the current Penn State coach. Uh, I don't I forgot the name, but he, he you said that he taught you four core values. Yes, sir. and he puts you on spot to uh, yes, you know, tell those four values. Can can you help us learn learn those four yes, values? Yes, those four core values were uh, you must be willing to sacrifice. You got to compete in mm. everything that you do. Uh, oh. Okay, I put you on spot now. <laughs> yes. Have, um, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Compete you got it. Everything Take you do, must be willing to sacrifice. No, Rohi. I would have been in Dom for okay. sure right now. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we had a long conversation. Hey, Coach Beck anyway. would be okay. mad at me right us. now. I'll let me get the information and I'll get back to you. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, T- take your, take a second to. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Hit yeah. me with the questions, though, my man. Okay. Yeah. No, no worries. Uh, you know, I'm gonna send this co- send this to your your coach and like, hey man, <laughs> your your uh, kid is not doing great here. Right. I gotta I gotta hit my <laughs> my best friend and ask, what was our core four core values? <laughs> 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 uh, that, that's okay. Uh, we can, you know, uh, maybe you can probably right, here it is. do we some recording. And... It's right here. Okay. Positive attitude. Positive mm-hmm. attitude. Great work ethic. Compete in everything you do and must be willing to sacrifice. Those were the four. Cool. So positive attitude. Work great, ethic. Great work ethic. Yes, sir. Great work ethic. Interesting. And third one is compete, compete. in everything you do. Compete in everything that in you everything do. You do. That's where mm-hmm. you can probably go beyond your you know yes, comfort zone and be the best in. that you can do. Yes. Exactly. And, and, and what's the final one? You must be willing to sacrifice. So you must be willing to wake Fair. up at 4 a.m. to yeah. compete a little bit better. Exactly. It's, it's more like, you know, for a, if you're playing a team sport, you have to sacrifice, you know, certain things at certain points so that you can win the games, right? You know, it's, yes, it's always, you know, particularly in some sports, you know, you can always find a, you know, do some extra things to grade the credit for yourself that might let the team lose. So you, you probably have to sacrifice certain things so that it's it's a collective game effort. Yes, so that's one way to look at it. But the other way is you know, sacrificing your, you know, maybe fun aspect because you want to grow and, you know, be in the sport. You have to wake up mm-hmm. at 4 a.m. And, and do the workout. So, yeah, then, I mean, yeah. I think so many, so many fact. Uh, you enjoy it. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Uh, thanks for sharing this. I'm, I'm glad uh, those, uh, you, you remember those uh, before the pod- podcast mm-hmm. ends. Definitely. So, cool. I think it's been a, it's been a great conversation. I, I you know, want to ask one last question, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, that's okay. So, you know, I, I ask this to every guest, right? So I want to, you know, understand or, you know, let me put the question, question differently. Um, can you help us learn something in two minutes that took very long time for you to learn? Something. Yes. All right. So work with me. So everything is already written in your life. Everything is already written in your life. All right. Hmm. Remember that. Remember that. Secondly, secondly, I want to make sure we we get the we get the proper information because it took a while for me to really get this. All right. Oh, so everything cool. you do is already written in your life. And the second thing is what you already mentioned, Rohit, and we talked about it a little bit is when you're being your true self and you put whatever it is out creatively that you live in your purpose. Think about Jay Z. Yep. We say he's the greatest rapper of all time because why? Because he he he's a great man. He's a great father to his kids. Great husband. Um, he's a great rapper. He's a great businessman because as a rapper, he's an artist. He is a business, and he's the first yep. person to say, "I'm a businessman." So he he he's truly himself. He's authentic with what he's doing. That's why we say he's great. But every yep. individual like myself, like I'm great, you great, Rohit, everybody, everybody in this world truly is great within themselves. But it's it's yep. on you as an individual to pull it out and give that to the world, truly, for other folks to see that light within yourself. But first, you got to see yep. it. First, you have to see yep. it. 
Great. So it's 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 about you. How to, it's it's you know it's more about understanding yourself a lot better, and and see and then also putting that into light and and also helping others or you know being great at what you do, right? You know, uh, yeah. First, the the main thing was the main thing. Everything in your life is already written, so life is gonna come at you. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna hit you yep. in the mouth. It's gonna bump your chin, bump your head. But like you said, yeah. you're already great. Understand why it's happening to you. Live your true life. Yep. Learn from it and grow through it. You said the motto is to keep exactly. growing. So just keep growing through it. Exactly. Uh, and everything has a reason and purpose for it. So if if it's a bad time, just experience it, and that's where you can learn. And if it's mm-hmm. a good time, you no, know, you're, you're going to see your that, that's, self. That's for good. Yeah, you're exactly. You want to make self. sure you enjoy that as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um never never ever um because since it's you know doubt yourself in the sense if things are not going great you don't have to be so you know uh depressive or you don't have to go feel so low because yeah. things are going to change you know everything everyone is great here it's about finding that greatness within yourself and then probably um you know transforming and uh that into a uh, a better experience right or or for a better life for yourself so just uh, learning did, did, did you say that right yes, yeah just keep learning and cool. growing yeah. exactly keep learning and growing cool Th- thanks for uh sharing all of it and i think that uh, since we we are all set time so cool uh and, and it's it's been a learning. great conversation ran uh i i truly uh, you know got to learn about raw performance because i had a different understanding before the podcast but yeah, i yeah, really yeah. see what you really what you're doing yeah i'm glad we had the conversation yep. to make it clear for folks exactly yeah. exactly and and uh, i and i see i can also see the impact that you are trying to create yes, and i'm sure i'm sure it will be um a, of lot more value to many kids over time uh, and and mm-hmm. i really can't wait to see uh, how many kids and many executives are benefiting from from your coaching and and thanks for being today and sharing with you know your personal journey your you know your life lessons and your expertise and what you're doing with me on the podcast uh, this this is really helpful thanks for that yes sir yes sir man it's called we it's called be open and authentic with rohit and that's what it's about man so i appreciate you giving me the platform and opportunity to like say give that light to the world um in any way that it can be Uh, like I said, if anybody yep. does have questions or have kids, you want training or anything, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Raw Performance. That's R A W P E R with the number four M A N C E. Maybe we can go from there. But uh, otherwise, like I said, bro, hit me. I Perfect. appreciate you. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Truly. Perfect. I'll do that, and I'll make sure uh, I attach the. you know instagram or you know linkedin information in the video in the description for the video so that if anyone right. wants to reach out it's I've easy heard. to you know get get that information yes sir Perfect. thank you so Sounds much sounds good that, um thanks man have a have a good night appreciate it. peace and thanks blessings sir. to you thank you again yep talk talk to you soon yep yep